everybody. My name is TJR. I'm a musician and a music writer. And my name is Robert Kinsler, and I'm a music writer and a musician. And we are here today to discuss some of our favorite albums of 2018. And or as I like to say, 2018. Thank you, 2018. <laughs> That's, that works too. <laughs> and we discussed, we debated, we even uh -huh. came, we even fought for a while. Right. And we decided that we would just discuss our top five right. each. Still not an easy decision. It's not. For definitely us, not. either of us. Are you going to have any particular order or is this... You, you know what, what, well maybe what I, I think I could say it now, maybe I start, is, is what I did is, um, is I, I, what I did in print is I listed my top 18 of 2018. 18, yeah. But when you said, hey, let's bring our top five, and I said, okay, I'm going to work. That'll force me because it is tough. The, the Orange County Register used to run my list, and we had to do our top 10, and we had to rank them numerically. Oh. Since I've been out on my own as a freelance freelancer, mm. yeah. you know, putting them on, on musicworthbind.com, I've just said, hey, I'll just do an alphabetical by title, and I'll just say my top 10 or my top 15 or my top 20 mm -hmm. albums. What I did this time is I said, "Hey, 2018, I'll do 18." And then ah, that, okay. so I so there was a few really good albums I had to unfortunately leave off, and maybe some of those albums will be on your list, which is cool. Also, so so if you live to 2055, are you going to have to do 55? Albums? Wow, I may have to. Okay, well. boy, I better get busy. <laughs> yes, better get busy. <laughs> so what? But what I decided to do is I said, "Hey, I'm going to take a little. Uh, I'll take a diverse." Uh, you know, like albums and uh -huh. things that are different from each other, because that'll show at least that you know I'm coming from across the spectrum of what, of of my interests, so to speak. Yeah, I'm not ranking mine either, and it was tough. I, as I began to look at different albums, I said, okay, well here is one album in a genre, and here's another and another album in the same genre. Of these two or three, which do I like the best? Mm -hmm. Which one would I put? Okay, this one goes in the top five. Sorry to you other two guys, you know, mm -hmm. you're still some of my favorite albums for the year, but, it, you know, I'm, that's how I try to, like, pare it down to five. Yeah, yeah, okay. and I think that's what I kind of tried to do as uh -huh. well, that, that uh, in the, with one notable exception, and I'll talk about that when we sure. go through our albums, Absolutely. you know. So, you know, what we'll do is, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started, and then we, yes. and as other things come up, we'll, we'll definitely try to make sure we okay. get those across. What I've done... Um, I'll start, and the first album I'm going to profile is Roseanne Cash's mm -hmm. uh, She Remembers Everything. Um, I'm a huge, longtime fan of Roseanne Cash. She was one of the first artists I ever got to review as a music writer for The Register in the early 90s. Wow. And uh, I didn't know much about her. I mean, I knew she was the daughter of Johnny Cash. That's about all I knew. Mm -hmm. And I think I knew one or two of her big country radio hits from the 80s. But she blew me away, and she has continued to blow me away. I most recently got to see her at a very intimate performance at the Grammy Museum. And again, I was just reminded with every note what a masterful writer she is, so literate. Her songs are so beautiful, and they really tap into the deepest parts of the human experience. And there's no exception with this album. Um, I, I I just find it revelatory. And, you know, what I have here, and, and I know we're not talking too much about the packaging, but it's a special edition of the album. So it includes um, three bonus tracks. And if you haven't yet picked up She Remembers Everything, go ahead and spring for the deluxe edition. Mm -hmm. You will not be sorry you did that. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful album. Yeah, I you have not brought this on the show previously, and I really like the look of this. Oh, it's beautiful. This package, is yeah. beautiful the yeah. way this looks. Really amazing, um, yeah. The the the, the yeah, whole the lyrics, little mini yeah. hardcover book format. Mm -hmm. That is nice. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And, and uh, there's guest appearances from uh, at least one other artist that's going to appear later on in my list today. Okay. So I don't want to give away too much, but sure. you know, if if you know, go ahead and listen to this either on one of the streaming services or YouTube. Check out some of the songs, and um, it, it's. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with modern country music artists, you know, like even someone like Casey Musgraves, the Pistol Annies, mm -hmm. that is not really this. This is more of an intimate Americana roots kind of mm -hmm. thing. But the songs are just so amazing, mm -hmm. you know, and just can't say enough good things about Roseanne. She Cash. is a tremendous songwriter. Yeah, she, she really, really is. is. And yeah. I haven't heard this album yet. And now that you've brought it here as part of your list, it makes me more curious to hear mm -hmm. it. So. Well, Thanks great. for bringing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring, start off mine with an album that a lot of people I'm sure are familiar with or have heard, and one that was certainly talked about on the channel, 
And that's, of course, the latest from Paul McCartney entitled Egypt Station. You know, I have to honor the fact that Sir Paul can be doing, have been doing this for as long as he has. I forget he, how old he is exactly. He's in his 70s. Yeah, I think he's 75, 76 now. Something like that, yeah. yeah. That he can be doing this for as long as he has. He doesn't need to do this for the money, that's mm -hmm. for sure. He's doing it because he still feels the need to create and craft music. Mm -hmm. He feels that need to be a songwriter. And that he can be doing it this long. And that he can still, you know, craft a song like Happy With You, which is on this album. Mm -hmm. Which is as good as anything that he ever did when he was with the Beatles. And that he can still craft an album as good as this as well. I mean, this is... This to me is a, this is a really solid album, track for track. There is no bad track on it. Uh, well, okay, I didn't like "For You." I've already yeah. made that very clear. I think you made that yeah, clear too. Yeah, that's that's the one clunker on there. I just don't think about that song yeah. when I think about yeah. this album. I, yeah. I almost forgot about it. No point well taken. <laughs> but I know that in the I have in some of my videos been critical of that time period, somewhere in the '80s through the early mid '90s. I was very critical of some of Paul's output during that time. But ever since "Memory Almost." almost full, mm -hmm. it's like he's been on this roll mm -hmm. where he's just made one solidly good album. Every mm -hmm. album of original material yeah. he's made, even his orchestral album mm -hmm. that he made, uh, the, the ballet that he did, mm -hmm. everything has been solid, really good, really strong track for track. And it, the fact, in fact, so good that as I was preparing for this, I kept saying to myself again, you know, maybe you need to re-listen to that time frame that mm -hmm. you've dismissed, the 80s. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around the early mid '80s through mm -hmm. the '90s, maybe and I, you need and, to reevaluate and, and, that period. Boy, and, I, and and please correct me out there if if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will. I believe "Flowers in the Dirt" came out about 1989. That was also, I thought, an amazing album. And I yeah, and the ones you know, and like I said, the years I sometimes get a little confused. He's obviously most beloved, I think, for his '70s albums like "Band on the Run" yeah. or "Venus, Venus and, Mars. and Mars." Yeah, but I'll tell you, "Flowers in the Dirt" is one of those albums. Boy, it really hits me when I. Put that one back on as well, too. I need to hear it again. Yeah. I, need, I mean, I never heard it before. Yeah. Like I said, I had, by that time, I'd already like, eh, I'm not that interested mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I should go back and check some of that yeah. out. But yeah. any rate, at any rate, though, so that's something I need to do. Yeah. Let's. And, and you know, one thing I want to say, too, yes. I real, that's a great album. I re, it's not on my list, but mm -hmm. believe me, that album and also um, the latest album from the Gin Blossoms, I really struggled, should I say, hey, maybe I should just go ahead and turn my top 18 albums into my top 20 mm -hmm. because that is a fantastic album and if you ask me next next week that may have wound up mm -hmm. on the list it, it is and i agree with everything you just said it's a fantastic album and and you know you have to salute sir paul for continuing to kind of really forge ahead and do great music and not be content to rest on his laurels because his laurels are pretty much larger than everyone else's laurels. Yeah. So, yeah, a great pick yeah, on that I, one. I, I'm just really pleased yeah. that it's such a good album. And, it, and it's funny. It makes that, me happy to say it's such a good album. It does. And actually, let's segue here. I'm going to feature an artist who who actually has worked with Paul McCartney, mm -hmm. and I think that they're big fans of each other. I and that's I know who. Elvis Costello and the Imposters, and, El, and with Elvis Costello... He obviously has co-written oh, yeah. with Paul McCartney. And this was his, uh, I want to say this was uh, uh, Elvis Costello's first album. And I know we talked about that since 2013. And wow, what a return to form this was. I, um, just such a wonderful album. He's working with Burt Bacharach on some of the songs here. And I know we've featured this album pr Recently, on a previous yeah. episode. But but this and Roseanne Cash, you know, I what, either one of those albums could be my number one album of 2018, depending on the day. But I just love this. And again, just like the one we talked about, this is also available as a special edition with some bonus tracks. Mm -hmm. If you haven't picked up the album yet, you know, get the album. But if, if you want to spring a few dollars more, go ahead and get this um, deluxe edition. It includes, um, I believe, four extra tracks on it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's definitely worth getting. You know, so can't you know Elvis Costello, like Paul McCartney, just a great classic artist, and 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 amazing that he's still doing music at this at this uh, level. Well, when you brought that up, that when you brought up that album on our last episode that aired, uh, I remember your comments. You were not expecting it to be one of your favorite albums yeah. of 2018, and obviously that opinion has not waned. Well, not at all. No, the more I hear, hear the album, the more impressed I am, and and just and like the Roseanne Cash album too. These are songs that that are just very rich. 
they're detailed, they, they speak to the human experience, and they're very real. You know, it's not, um, it's not phony music or anything. You know, there's nothing artificial about it in any way, and the music and the, and the lyrics. Certainly not, yeah. certainly not. And so I'm going to get to my number two here. And this album uh, I brought up much, much earlier in the year. It's, sorry, it's got, this little, it's got this plastic case that it comes with. It is entitled Extra Life by Darlene Side. And how shall I speak of this album? Perhaps one of the most beautiful albums I have ever heard dealing with apocalyptic visions ever. The last time that an album gave me an out-of-universe experience like this was back in 2008, when the Fleet Foxes released The Helplessness Blues. This album is a rare beauty, and I will be listening to this album for as many eternities as time will allow. And if you're wondering why all the poetic speech in this particular summation, <laughs> listen to the album and you'll understand why. That's wow. all I'm going to say. Wow, great, great. Yeah, you definitely make me want to hear it. And I think I heard a few of the tracks when you brought it, but I obviously need to immerse myself in this album. That's You do. I've been delinquent. If you know. the end of the universe has to have a soundtrack, it needs to be this album. Wow, <laughs> wow, okay. Wow, sounds good. I, I don't know if I can follow that, but... You don't uh, have to. So Just tell us your next okay, album. Okay, sounds good. What, what I'm going to do is... is uh, one of my favorite albums of the year was the latest album from Gorillaz, and that's called The Now Now. Uh -huh. And I didn't misspeak there. It is The Now Now. And um, just love this album. It's uh, Damon Auburn is obviously the, the front man, the, the musical voice of Gorillaz, and it's just a great album. It, it's not typically, you know, the kind of music that... Um, that I would listen to, I'd say, you know, I'm more of a rock guy or more of an Americana guy. This is a little different than that, but the songs are so beautiful, and there and the, there's kind of a theme on this album. I know I noted when I brought it on the show. A lot of the songs even have like geographic locations, and it just t transports you. It's like when I listen to this album when I'm driving, it's just great. Some of the songs, like uh, I think one's called Idaho. Let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna look down here, make sure I don't misspeak. Like. Uh, like Zurich, Magic City, um, you know, Kansas. So a lot of these, obviously, I think were penned when, when he was traveling or he was thinking about these locations. And he's done a great job of bringing a mood and a sense of place to these songs. And I just love this album. It's just, just a great album. And it's the latest album from Gorillaz. I'm glad you've been able to bring it up again. This was, of course, the album that sadly their publishing company forced us to remove right, the audio yeah. when we sampled the tracks on the episode. And so I'm, for that reason, I'm glad you could yeah, bring it up and yeah. you can talk more about it. Yeah, and I, and I hope people will listen to it. And I'm sure on the streaming services, it's, it's available. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, it's on yeah. all the streaming yeah. services. So you can check it out for yourself and see if you like that. And and uh, just a very, and, and actually, I, the first track is interesting because, you know, we talk a lot of times about artists you don't necessarily think together. Um, George Benson plays the, the signature his signature jazz guitar styling on the track, and it, yeah. it's very cool. And and again, Damon is such a talented artist; he can bring other artists in to what he's doing, mm -hmm. and it's seamless. You know, it's effortless the way he brings that into what he does, and it's it's just a really good album. Cool. You know, much better than the, than Gorilla's previous album, which mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed some of the tracks, but it was not nearly as as not wonderful as this. Yeah. Great. So what's your next? I'm um, looking forward to hearing what, you, yes. what else you brought my in. My next one, I actually picked it up on vinyl. And this is Rifles and Rosary Beads by Mary Gaudier. Hopefully I've said that name correctly. I'm still not 100% sure, sure I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I'm going to start my talk about this album by just saying the following. You know, there are great motion pictures that are not easy to watch. And oftentimes those types of movies are also impossible to forget either, once you've seen them. Uh, Rifles and Rosary Beads by Mary Gaudier is the musical equivalent of that type of a motion picture. Uh, in this album, singer-songwriter Mary Gaudier uh, lets war veterans tell their stories through her. Um, this is a sobering and somber album. It's not a party album. It's not an album you're going to rock out to. It's not an album you're going to get your groove onto or have on a road trip necessarily. This is a real serious album. 
it's not an easy listen, but that doesn't mean it's not worth your time. It's definitely worth your time. It is definitely an essential listen. And, uh, and it's one that after you hear it, you're probably never going to forget mm. as well. Wow. And, and so let's hear well, what you have next. This, this is kind of where I said it was a little different today. So I just previously, we just talked about gorillas. To me, in an age where, where artists sometimes take, you know, like five, six years to do a new record, mm -hmm. you know, for a variety of reasons, Damon Auburn impresses me because like Neil Young and because like many of the artists in the 60s and early 70s, they're just cranking out. He not only did the Gorilla, release the Gorillaz album uh, this year, later in the year he released this album, Maryland, with one of his other projects, which is called The Good, The Bad, and The Queen. Mm -hmm. This is The Good, The Bad, and The Queen's second album. Their previous album, I think, was more than a decade ago. Uh -huh. This is like a wow. side project he did. And again, totally different than Gorillaz. But but brilliant. It, it's kind of like that 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 mu I guess you would call it like music hall music. Kind of like a little bit what the Kinks have done in the past. You get a little bit of that that s s musical sense here. Huh. Just beautiful. And uh, just so you know, it's it's uh, it's not just uh, Damon Auburn, but the bassist Paul. And I'm probably going to butcher his name, and I really apologize. It's Simone, and he was the bassist in the Clash. He's also uh, his collaborator in the group. So they've done this, and it's just a great album. I know I on one of our other episodes I showed it. Also, there's a, a really deluxe edition that comes into a big book, but you can also just get the album, and the album is great. And um, um, you, you know what I'd say is that um, um, you know the music harkens to another time, but it's also very contemporary. You know. When you say harkens to the time, what are you referring to? I'm just yeah, like curious. maybe like the 40s, the 50s, really? you know, just in the past. Yeah, there's, really? there's just some of the orchestration, some of the instrumentation. Huh. But there's also things about it that are very contemporary and very modern, like huh. his other projects, whether it's Gorillaz, like it's Blur. And uh, it's just very, um, you know, it, it, there's an English sensibility to it that maybe is a little foreign to, I think, um, our American ear, especially today in an age where kind of more urban pop and other styles of kind of become like almost the norm now. You have made yeah. me curious. But but uh, it's just great. It's just a really uh, very interesting musical landscape and moodscape that he's created. Um, hmm. So just really have been enjoying that album. I'm intrigued. Well. I wish this was a regular episode where we yeah. play tracks. Yeah. But, but, but what's, so amazing is, it, what's so amazing is that he's done two, two albums, you know, released yeah. two, two totally different, really fully realized great albums in one year. Wow. You know, and that's impressive. It is. Because you're just not used to that anymore. No. So. No, that is impressive. So my next album is a real surprise. It was a surprise when I first heard it. And if you had told me back in 2017 that I would be listening to an album by Rick Springfield in my top five list for 2018, I would not have believed you. And now that 2018 is over, mm -hmm. I'm still very happily and pleasantly surprised that I am enjoying this album. And I'm talking about The Snake King by Rick Springfield. Now, I first came across this album from a pre, an advance track that I heard. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a, a playlist of new, new song releases, and I heard this song entitled Blues for the Disillusion that was off the album. Uh, it caught my ear, but I had no clue who I was listening to. And it was uh, a song that just randomly popped up on this playlist. And I found myself thinking, who is this young kid? Yeah. <laughs> who is this young kid that I'm listening to that has all this fire in his belly? So I grabbed my phone and I looked at it and it says Rick Springfield. And I'm like, no, nah, no way, no way, no Rick Springfield? This has got to be someone with a similar name. Uh -huh. Not the Jesse's Girl guy. No, no, no. No way. No way. No way. And then I turn around and there's Garth and Wayne. And they say, way. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm like, no, it's, it's Rick Springfield. And I'm like, holy, you know. Yeah. And um, the songs on this album are fun and dark at the same time. The musicianship is tight but not so tight that it loses that element of danger that only youthful exuberance has. Um, in other words, this album 
it gets to have its cake and eat it too. And it's a damn tasty piece of cake. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, totally, this one caught, caught me totally mm -hmm. off guard. And still enjoying the you know what out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's in my top five. Wow, wow. What an endorsement. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I, you know, when I saw Rick Springfield live, and he did some of the songs from there, and he was, he was, he's always energetic in, mm -hmm. in concert. But you could see that he was really passionate about this album. So yeah, with good to, reason. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna have to listen, check out that with entire. Very album. good reason. Yeah, absolutely. Now for the last, uh, because I wanted to show a little diversity. You know, I've I've brought in some things that were very orchestrated or by well-known artists. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna feature a, an area, uh, unsigned artist that we featured a few times, and that's Michael Ubaldini. And this is uh, Michael's latest CD. It's called Song of Our Time. And boy, is it. Um, basically, just with, um, you know, with his guitar, his harmonica, his original song craft, Michael has, again, delved into kind of the human experience to the world around him. He's, all the crazy things that he sees around him. And he's able to put those artfully and literately into his songs. And, and what another great album. And, and we, we've talked about Damon Albarn being prolific. Michael, who's, who's basically having to fund these CDs and then through his fans that are buying the CDs, he's basically having to do these on his own. Um, he's completely yeah. self-funding. And, yes. and he's putting out like a great album every year and they're, they're all masterworks. I mean, yeah. very impressive. And, and, you know, I believe it was Mike Bohm in the LA Times that called him kind of like right up there with Springsteen. And, and I concur with that. He is such a fantastic singer-songwriter. And the fact that he's able to do it without the backing of a big management company or without a big record label mm -hmm. and without some of the, the kind of huge accolades that maybe can help drive you to the next big finish line. Michael continues just through, through a hardcore following to be able to do, to, you know, in a sense of artistic purpose. Desire. And, and need, desire. Yeah. You know, and, and he's got that fire in his belly. Yeah, he does. And, 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 it's, and it's not wavered. And he's continued to put out great albums. And this is such a good uh, album. Check, uh, check, and maybe what we'll do is we'll put his website on the screen. And the title of the album is? is uh, it's called Song of Our Time. So and, here's a, and, and I would encourage you to support Michael by his music. Um, and, you, and his website is Rock and Roll Poet. Yeah. Dot com. Go to his website. Check out his music. He has some of his videos for some of the songs, and uh, and you know, discover this great artist. I have I have heard this album myself. I'm really glad you brought it on, and, and uh, you know, Michael is probably one of the best undiscovered singer songwriters, independent artists that you'll ever hear. Right? Yeah, that you'll ever hear. That is yeah. that most of the general population does not know. And yeah, he, he's he's right there with people like Springsteen and Tom Petty. Yeah, he really in that is. vein. And this is all a mostly acoustic album. It's yeah, this is an, acoustic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with, with uh, and just some great harmonica. songs. Yeah, yeah, just great, great songs. And uh, um, you know, some of the titles even you know like there's a, there's a Celtic kind of love song on there called uh, Matty O'Day. But free speech blues is very much relevant to the times we're living in. These things, these are hot topics. But you know, he doesn't beat you over the head. They're done. The song is still what comes first. But he has a way to tap into the world around him, and 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 bring that yeah. artfully to where you want to hear the music. You know, like like we talked about recently. You know, my father passed away recently. I I was playing this album when I was when my dad was still with us, and I was going out to see him. And just the song, these songs are so powerful and resonate so deeply, mm. you know, just like life itself in, in the darkest of times and, mm. and stuff. He's just, he's an amazing artist. Yeah, he's written, some, he's written yeah. some of the best songs I've ever heard. Yeah. I've, I have a lot of his albums. He's yeah. written some of the best songs yeah, I've ever heard. Yeah, I agree. Heard. I have just about all his albums and he's terrific. Yeah, thanks for bringing him yeah. Yeah. on that. So my next album is Free Yourself Up by Lake Street Dive. And this album begs the question... What happens when you get really great musicians to make really fun party music? Well, instead of disposable party music, which is what you normally get, uh, you get party music that gets more exciting with each consecutive listen. Uh, this is one of the most infectious albums that I've heard in quite a while. This is the fun, soulful party album that you have been looking for. Uh, I describe this album as a mixed cocktail. It's a mixed cocktail of soul, funk, jazz, rock, and blues. And yet for all the fun times that it dishes out, it also has its reflective moments, and it also showcases some truly 
amazing musicianship with occasional subtle hints of progressive rock stylings, if you can believe that. In a saner world, this band would be a huge hit machine. So uh, free yourself up and check out Lake Street Dive. Wow, cool. I do want to bring up one other thing though. Just, I'm gonna cheat, sorry. Okay. I'm gonna cheat. You know, back in 2017, when we talked about our top albums, I remembered I said, I reserve the right to talk about U2's Song of Experience album mm -hmm. because it came out right at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I didn't put it in my list because mm -hmm. it was like, I barely lived with it. Yeah. And yeah. I felt like it was too soon to really make that right. call. So I said, I have a right to talk about this in 2018. And you know, the more I've heard this album, the better it's gotten. Uh -huh. And had it come out sooner in the year, earlier in the uh -huh. year, I would have probably put it in the list. Yeah. And had it come out in 2018, it would have made my list. Yeah. Because it was that good an album. Yeah, it was a good So album. I'm just giving an honorary mention for you two songs of experience. Mm -hmm. and, right. Uh, well, you're entitled to do that. I think that <laughs> that works. You are too, you know. You I can know. cheat anytime you That's want. That's right, yeah. And, but, and uh, it wouldn't be the first time. No, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> so those are our top five. Um, what do you think? What Of the albums we've talked about, which ones have you heard? Which ones are you curious to know more about? And what are your top five? Please let us know in the comments, everybody. And as always, if you like what we're doing, be sure to click that subscribe button. Be sure to smash notifications so you can know when we release new videos. Be sure to click like. And if you wanna help us even more to make more videos, please go to the Patreon page and uh, become a patron supporter. As little as the cost of one cup of coffee. In fact, let's, there we go. Props, props for a professional props, show. Yeah. As little as the cost of one of these, whoops, no corporate logos. Yeah. As little as the cost of one of these. <laughs> we'll get in trouble. Can go a long way in helping us out. So we appreciate your support. Everybody, happy new year. Happy new year, definitely. Robert, happy new year. Yeah, I think you too. Let's see what happens now, 2018, as far as the music. And we're going to do our best to cover yeah. everything, whatever we can, whatever well, we think is worth your checking out. And I'm hoping 2019 is just as great because I'll, and I know we talked about it last word maybe, mm -hmm. as the number of amazing reissues mm -hmm. on the list along with my top oh, yeah. 18 releases. I put 15 reissues and even then I didn't get all the great reissues that I, like I didn't get the Hendrix one on there because I hadn't had a chance to live with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was so, I mean... I'm hoping 2019 picks up right where 2018 left off. Stay tuned, everybody. See you later. Bye. Hi, this is TJR. If you like this video, please be sure to click like, click subscribe, and also click the bell notifications icon so you can know when I release new videos. And if you'd like to help me make more videos, please go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash TJR, the original, and make a monthly pledge. Pledging as little as the cost of one cup of coffee a month can make a huge difference. Patreon supporters get access to exclusive early content, and it's also the best way to suggest a video topic. And even if you can't become a patron supporter at this time, I still want to say thank you for watching the video, and I look forward to checking out your comments.